Hi there, it's Rob from Oxfoot. Welcome to another Will It Deploy video where we try to automate the deployment of different technologies using Octopus Deploy. Today we're going to take a look at automating the deployment of an ASP.NET Core web app using a DAC pack or Data Tier Application Package with SQL Server 2017. And we're deploying to an AWS Windows 2016 virtual machine. We'll even talk about how to roll back database changes if you have a problem during your deployment. Let's get started. This is the application we're trying to deploy. It's called random quotes and it gives us just that, a random quote. So if we click the big green fresh button, you can see it gives us a different random quote every time. We've seen this application in different videos. It's written using ASP.NET Core 2.0 and previously it used hard-coded data, either in a flat file or a stub repository. In this case, we've added a SQL Server backend and we're using a data tier application package or DAC packs to manage our data. We've also added a new feature where if you click on an author's name, it takes you to a quote by the author page. In this case, there's two quotes by Paul Rand. If we head over to Visual Studio, we can see that it's still quite a simple application. It has a single controller and now there's two views. Our standard view that we, we see, which is the index view and also the quotes by author view. The other thing that we've added now, we have a new quotes database project and this is our DAC pack project. So we have two tables. We have the quotes table and we also have an author's table. Initially, the quotes table just had the end ID, the author and quote text, but we then updated it to support that new feature, that quotes by author feature. So we added a foreign key and author ID and split out the authors into their own table. So there's now an author table with an ID and name column. If you're not familiar with data tier applications or DAC packs, there's some links in the description below to help you get started. This is a simple example, but it's representative of what happens with real applications every day. New features are requested and code and databases change. We want to be able to automate the deployment of our web app and the database, including changes in a repeatable and reliable way. So the big question is, will it deploy? Yes, it will. Let's walk through the solution. I have a local Octopus instance running and you can see I have a single project called random quotes and it has no deployments. I'd like to take a quick look at my infrastructure. You can see I have three environments, dev, test and production, which is quite common. If we take a look at our dev environment, because we're going to be deploying to it today, we have a single deployment target called OctoServer01. And this is a Windows 2016 virtual machine running in Amazon's EC2 service. Alternately, this could be a server running on-prem or in some other cloud infrastructure as well. This particular deployment target has two tags, database and web. So it'll be functioning both as our database server and our web server. But as we deploy through our environments, commonly those two roles get split to separate machines. Now I'd like to head over to our random quotes project and just take a look at our deployment process. Our deployment process to be able to deploy our random quotes website and its database is very simple. There's only three steps. The first two steps are related to acquiring and deploying our DAC pack, updating our database. And the third one is actually deploying our website. Our first step is an Octopus package step. And really its job is just to copy our package, which is called quotes database, to our deployment targets with the role database. Now our quotes database project is simply a zip of the output of our database project that we saw earlier. So it includes our dat pack and a few other related files. Our next step is a community contributed step template called SQL deploy dat pack. So if you're not familiar with our community steps, anytime you go to add a new step to your deployment process, we show the built-in Octopus steps, but also our community contributed steps. In this case, if I just type in SQL, we can see I have two community contributed steps already installed. 
but there's just a wealth of additional step templates contributed by the Octopus community that can help you accomplish tasks without custom scripting. So if we take a look at this step template, it really is great. It runs on all our database deployment targets. And if we take a look at this, you simply have to specify your package step name. So that's the previous package that got the file onto our deployment target. And in this case, it's acquired DAC pack, which is our previous step. I specify the file name for my DAC pack. I'm also specifying that yes, I do want to deploy my DAC pack and I'm generating report and the output script file. And if those will be attached as Octopus artifacts to our deployment. And so then I just specify a few additional settings, my database server name and the da target database name, as well as my username and password. Those are all specified as Octopus variables, so they're all bound. And if we take a quick look at our variables, you can see everything required to build up my database connection string is just stored as Octopus variables. Nice and simple, scoped to the appropriate target environments. Our third step is to deploy our website. This is using a deploy to IIS step. And if we take a look, this step will be run on all of our web servers and it's using the random quotes package. This package contains all the files related to run our web application. And if we keep scrolling down, it is an IIS website and I do specify a website name and my application pool details. I specify my binding. In this case, it's just quite simple. I'm only using HTTP, anonymous authentication. I've also turned on JSON variable replacement. This enables us to update our app settings as we deploy our web application through environments from dev to test to production. And that includes some key values like our database connection string. Now let's see things in action. We're gonna create some releases and kick off some deployments. We're going to create two releases with different package versions. The first release has packages with version 1.0.0 and it includes the single quotes table with author and quote text together. The second release has packages with version 1.1.0 and splits out the author details into its own table and adds a foreign key linking quotes to author. So let's see how this goes. Before I create any releases, I'd like to take a quick look at our deployment target. So this is our Windows 2016 server and I'm looking at Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So what we're looking at is the random quotes dev database. I manually created this as well as a service account and I did this manually, but you could just as easily script that out. So taking a look at this database, if I just refresh it, you can see there's no tables there yet. So now I'm going to jump back to Octopus. So I'm going to create our first release. I'll call it version 1.0.0. And as I just mentioned, I'm going to specify explicit package versions. So this first one is 1.0.0. So I'll save that. Yes, I'm going to deploy to development. I can take a quick look at our summary and click deploy. So our deployment was successful. And as we specified in our deploy DAC pack step, we have two artifacts from the deployment. But what I'd like to do first is to jump back to AWS and take a look at our server. So if I now refresh my database, we can now see that our quote table has been created. And if we take a look, we can see we have three columns as expected. ID, author, and quote text, all in a single table. Now, if I jump back to Octopus, and if I open up our development site, we can see random quotes has come up, and the application version, it's version 1.0.0 running in our development environment. And those configuration values are coming from our app settings, and Octopus automatically updated them for us. So if I click the refresh button, everything is working just as expected. Now I'm going to create a second release and I'm going to call this 1.1.0. I've added that new feature and I've updated my database. 
This time I'm using my latest packages, which are version 1.1.0 as well. So I'll click save and I'm gonna go ahead, de deploy to development and I review the summary and I'll just click deploy. This was successful as well. So if I jump back to our AWS server, now I'm going to refresh my database tables again, and we can now see that we have an authors table and a quotes table. And if we take a look, we can see our brand new authors table is there as expected. And looking at the quotes table, it has been updated and we now have an author ID for and key. If I jump back to Octopus and go back to our sample application, I'll just refresh that. We can now see that version 1.1.0 is also running in the development environment. And if I click refresh a couple times, we can see that it's working nicely. Now we added a new feature. If I click on the author's name, we can see the quotes by author page. And in this case, we see two quotes by Paul Rand. So that's also working great. Now I'd like to talk about rollbacks. If something goes wrong during a deployment, there's generally three ways to handle it. The first is to roll forward. That is to fix the problem and deploy a new version. The great thing about this option is that it works for both your web apps and services, as well as the backend, your database. The next option is to roll over or try again. Sometimes there's intermittent problems like network hiccups, etc. And if you try again, it can resolve the problem and you can move forward. The final option is to roll back. That is to revert to the previous version of your application. If you do need to roll back, this is an easy option for your web apps and services because with Octopus, you can just redeploy the old version but databases require more thought. There are several options available when using DAC packs, including taking a snapshot each time you do a release. This enables you to use that snapshot to do another comparison for rollback purposes. That said, this requires you to think about how you design your database updates. One of the things I did in my second database update was to leave the original quote author column in place instead of removing it immediately. This was done intentionally to make the change additive so that I could always roll back if needed. Once I shipped my changes and I was happy with them in production, I could always deploy an update in the future that removes that column. And this makes rollbacks far, far easier. Now, this is a simple case, but the principle needs to be considered on larger projects as well. And it's definitely challenging, but there are solutions. If you're new to Octopus, you might be asking yourself, why would you use this over doing things manually or executing them with scripts or on your build server? The main advantages are you deploy your database changes and updates alongside your application for very easy coordination. You can use a single consistent deployment process for repeatable and reliable deployments. And it's easy to automate. I didn't do any custom scripting. This was nice and easy. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below, including a link to start a free 45 day trial of Octopus Deploy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos weekly. Happy deployments.